You think this is an 1892. This is another one of Bruno's little acquisitions. Because let's face it, he knows a guy. This thing appears to have been converted over for some kind of Argentine something or other into what we think is a 45 ACP lever gun. It's got some issues, um, one of which is an incredibly light trigger pull. So we're going to have to deal with that. Um, and just see if this ooze coming out from underneath the forend is oozing all the way underneath. So let's dive in. This isn't going to be too deep. It's an 1892, but it's been converted to a uh, pistol caliber carbine. And now let's go take a look at what's going on inside this thing. Convert it, do the things that we do here. And off we go. Well, this is something goofy. So this is a sling swivel that's held in with the cross bolt. Yeah, so already this is looking a little jank because that's asking a set of 440 threads to do a lot of work. All right, we'll just kind of see if we can't massage this out. It's a little bent, and I can't imagine why, because it's not a whole lot of screw to an awful lot of work. Oh, baby, that thing is bent. Okay. So we'll just keep, you know, we're not even going to be able to turn it. These cross bolts are always a weak spot on the Winchesters because people want to go in and just gorilla these things tight. And I mean tight, tight, like wow tight, like incredibly freaking tight. And they don't need to be. So when they do that and the recoil forces start going, you wind up with a screw that looks like that. Yikes. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's exhibit alpha. Let's get the front end off this thing. It comes apart like most 92s. However, Bruno and I surmise there's like a little, um, there's an addition on the muzzle right here. And that's done because I'm telling you, it's 16 and a quarter inches right to here from the front end of the bolt. So I don't know if back in 1915 when they built this thing or when it was modified probably in the 50s we don't know what we got this is mott unit of issue one each um here let me get a little smaller screwdriver for that all right i got away with that blade's too big all right so we'll just pop this off take the front end off this thing it's a 92 i mean it's every winchester you've ever taken apart I honestly believe this was a much better effort, this 92, than the 94. The 94, it's almost like that got mailed in. Um, mechanically, I think this gun's a little bit better off here. Okay, I'm going to have to... Or is that going to screw out, or is that going to lift out? That will lift out. All right. Well, we got a booby trap here, because this thing going to explode. <laughs> All right, we'll see if we can come through here. Nope, got to turn that off too. Taking these things apart, everybody thinks I take a million of them apart. And I don't, they're all unique. They're all unique, they're all one of a kind. So when I'm doing this, I know you can't see through my hand, but the reason why I'm doing this is I'm trapping that spring. I'm just making sure that I keep my finger over the end of this thing. So if loosening this cross bolt tension on it decides to be the one thing that lets that cap go, I don't wind up wearing it. Okay, let's see here, right there. All right. So that's loose. So I should be able to just push this out very gently. There's that screw. And these threads are like, they're, if they're 440, 448, there's something really small. So we've got that out. We've got this out. This tube should come out. Yeah. That comes off. we got to get this to rotate. There's a lot of rust up underneath that. Okay. Okay. Winter, winter, chicken dinner. Pulling the camera back a little bit now, we notice that we've got rust up underneath the stock line. Nothing um, out of the ordinary for what we're looking at here, but there's a lot of, oh yeah. Hold on a minute. 
So you can see this has been re-drilled in the past. This tube used to have a notch here, so I would bet from that spot, this tube started out like pointing that way. And when they did the addition and they moved the barrel bands around and they put this nose piece on, that they flipped the tube over and then recut the front end because that, um, there's a lot of cutting going on there. And I've still got this kind of, oh yeah. And we look at the back end of that, we can see that's a little bit bent. That might have something to do with the fact that this gun doesn't feed. And why Bruno was able to pick it up for a freaking song. All right, in a 92, there's only one bolt holding the stock in. So we'll just pop this out and there's lots of ooze. So when the gun came in here, the stock was doing this. And the problem with this is, is that when you shoot a gun, and I've said it before, this whole thing tries to go, the line of resistance is down here in my thumb and the whole gun tries to fold up like that. And eventually what it'll do is it'll blow a scab off down here, it'll blow a scab off on the other side. You'll see that, and in fact, there are some cracks on the other side here in this stock that because it wasn't tight. So what we'll probably do, and, and we're not even gonna show it, but I will probably like acro glass a little thin a thin piece of cardboard up underneath the tang so it'll it'll draw back down again the tang bowl has not been shortened you can tell because it's got that original winchester fire blue on it so we don't have to worry about that let's see what we're going to find in here not bad there's mold though you see those white spots that's mildew we have to kill that because if that gets up inside this bundle of soda straws we call it stock it will absolutely dry rot this thing from the inside out the other issues we're having here let me get the glare off of it hold on a minute let me get the glare off it right there so you can see where all that oil has been soaking in from the head we have that same oil soak problem on this side you can see that split line right there it hasn't let go yet but what's causing that and it's because there's a thin wedge of wood right here this is a very entirely savable stock and we'll go after that, but that's not why we're in here. We're really in this gun because the trigger is unsafe. Um, it'll actually bump off and I don't even want to demonstrate that. So we'll keep going. All right, we've got to go into this access port right here. And that access screw. By the way, I may not have mentioned this, but the very first thing you do is you sweep the shop because if you drop that little bad boy right there, you're not gonna find it. So you gotta sweep the floor before you work. It's nice to do it afterwards, but you gotta sweep it, be you gotta sweep it before. Okay. So there's a pin that's gonna line up inside that hole right there. And we will take a punch and just casually come into this access port on the backside. Oh, smaller punch. There we go. Bruno's got his hand underneath there, and off it comes. And you heard it hit the floor, and you also heard the tension drop on it. So this is now separate from this. So now all we got to do now is just start popping screws, and the whole thing will drop out on us. And that's where we're going to go next here. Wow, man, that's light. All right, let me reset the camera. I got to get a different angle. So there's like a half moon cut out of this bad boy. There's like a half moon cut out of it right there you go thank you um and then so we take the lock screw out first and this is just a pin so you don't have to kill these things when you put them together and take them back apart again you don't require enormous levels of torque so that'll come in like that that'll come out and then this will release the finger lever and then we can drag these guys down a little bit more and possibly get the bolt out. Yeah, I'm doing it in the wrong order. Just spare me. Okay. That's got to come down a little bit further there. Okay. Okay, that was the ejector got in the way. That's what happened there. Okay. All right, other than the fact that it's just munged up and filthy, it's munged up and it's filthy. Ooh, there's the unobtainium part right there. Wow, off of 92 Winchesters. Good luck finding that bad boy because it's not captured. 
so it will disappear. And that's one of the things that Burgess fixed in the Kennedy rifle was he captured the ejector setup. Got a lot of other stuff a little bit jank, but he captured that and there we go. Okay. We'll back this out and we'll pull out the mainspring. I'm going to leave the strain screw in here, and the strain screw was not pushing up on the spring at all. But anytime I've ever seen one of these strain screws touching the bottom of one of these springs, they break right there. So I don't know, I guess that was their attempt at, at modern metallurgy. Okay, pop that out. Now, unlike that Colt Burgess we did, we did not feel the need or feel compelled to uh, angel piss this gun down for a couple of days. It didn't need that. Okay, here we go. Get that out of the way here. Ah. Come out of there, you little bugger. Here we go. That'll come out. That will allow me to pull the hammer out. And now we can start working on getting this bottom metal loose. And it's all kind of like glued together by um, a variety of rust borne objects. So right there, and right there and this should just slide backwards and it's not so i'll give it a couple of love taps here with a hammer and we'll just sort of love tap it backwards a little bit nope wow that bad boy's in there good okay it's glued in well if in doubt let your angels piss on it so we'll do this and we'll be back in a couple of seconds here after this stuff penetrates and I'll see if I can dynamite some of this ooze loose. There are two surfaces right there. See them there and there. You don't want to beat on this knife edge right here or else you'll peen it all up. There's an edge right here. It's not very thick. So you don't want to beat this up. So you want to make sure when you're tapping on this and this has been sitting in the... Uh, this has had coil sitting on it now for quite some time. So I should be able to get my hand out of the way. Hell no. Here we go, right there. And then let me light this. There it is. So if I do this. That took 45 minutes. For the coil to soak through all that gack so we could drive this out this should have just come out we should have been able to just pull it out with our hands but that's kind of where that's the gack loading we did all that without beating this up too bad we didn't mark it up we did peen that surface over just a little bit i'll take care of that and push that back and we did all that hate and discontent with a two ounce ball peen hammer so i know they're technically made out of steel but they're really not okay hold on a minute here Come on up right on the center there. All right, there we go. So this is the Santa Fe Provincial Police. And it says caliber 45. And then this is a Ray Fermando, which would be, it's it's been changed. Um, and that's, that's what's written on the side of it. There's some other spurious writing on this thing right here. It says 45 Long Colt. This gun is not in 45 Long Colt. There is no conceivable world on which this thing is a 45 long call but we've basically got it taken all the way apart here if we look up inside we can see that they've modified the these are modified uh, shell holders i mean in, in a 45 or a 4440 that cut is all the way back here where the front of the punch is not up there so both of these have been um replaced to allow a much shorter cartridge to work and it's only working with the front half of the lifter it's not working with the back half so um, we're going to go ahead and pop the lifter out we'll get those other couple of screws out there we go and we'll uh we'll take that out here after i'm done dropping all my tools so you see the notch on the hammer is only half of the thickness of the blade of, of the of the trigger so this has been stoned off by somebody that didn't understand the dynamics of this and the only way to put this hook back is to take a little bit of this right here and then by extension we're going to have to take a little bit of this toggle off 
and this is the toggle that the uh, that the mainspring grabs and we're going to swing it so we're going to have to remove a little bit right there to give the trigger access to this thing it's got to have access to it see so we'll get rid of some material right here and lay this thing let this thing lay down on it and that's just going to be four or five swipes on a stone i'm going to lay this thing up in a, in a vise take four or five swipes on a stone remove a little bit of material give me a little bit more but we're not changing any angles we're just allowing this to engage a little more deeply and then we're going to throw all this crap in a conversion pot and uh, dig all this dirt off of it because the gun is filthy so i've taken a hammer and i've mounted it in a vise the safety notch is here and this is the full cock notch so and i mounted it backwards i know i'm right-handed and i'm in front of you here so i'm going to go in do what i got to do and come out there's the two things we're going to want to reduce we want to drop that surface in towards the vise without changing the angle here and all we're going to do is allow the sear to have a little bit more access to counteract the fact that this edge here got taken off by somebody who didn't understand that all of this has to spin in a circle. And if you make it smaller, then the sear will crawl up and hit the edge of this safety notch and damage it. You do all your work during a trigger job on the sear, which in this case is the trigger. So all I want to do, I put that little bit of black down, and I don't know how well that's showing up, but I'm just going to take some of this off. And you can see now where there's a silver line right there. And that's all I'm doing. And I'm coming up against and I'm using the top of the vise as my check down. So the top of the vise, watch how far up the stone climbs. Just that far. And that's all I'm doing is using the top of the vise as reference. And we're not going to go much more than this. And there it is. So you can see now we've got two flat spots down here and just that little bit of stoning. You're going to have to take my word for it. Just that little bit of stoning here really gave us some more relief and gave the nose of the, the sear, in this case the trigger, a place to drop in. I was not pushing the stone back up against this surface. I was pushing down. So I dropped that down without messing with this. You start messing with this, now the hammer starts to rotate and it messes up all the other timing. There's a lot to this and it's very difficult to describe in a video, but this is what I'm doing. All right, I've fished the bottom metal out of the, uh, the conservation pot here so we can go do this. I've got the trigger mounted back in its housing and then we're just gonna drop the hammer in here. So hang on a minute here, I'll show you what I'm doing. Eh. Oh, there it is. Over there. Okay. So the hammer's in, and now I've got the uh, the screw that would ordinarily go through the receiver and hang on to it. But the important thing is cock, right? Here we're at full cock, and I'm pulling up on it hard. I mean, watch this. I'm going to make the pad of my finger change colors. I'm pulling up on it hard, but it releases easily. But it's not that it's not that light anymore. I've got a lot of load on this thing in order to get it to let go. So we fix kind of that. It doesn't want to stay at full cock problem. Um, and, and that's done now in one nutshell. To really test this thing, we do it without the spring in there. Um, but in this particular case, what a this is fine because I'm pulling on this way harder than a mainspring would push on it. All right, let's go solder us a bang too. Let's fix that problem and we'll have the two known issues with this thing dealt with. The Winchester magazine tubes are not welded together. They're not soldered. They're rolled like a cigar. So when this thing got modified and you always put a drill bit down in it, you can see that it's not very vertical here. There's a, a little bit of a wobble to it. And then we grab it and we see that it's not even, the solder joint has failed. I shouldn't be able to push it around like this. So one of the things, this will answer everything Bruno said about it not feeding the right way. See, I've got it running straight now. So what we'll do is we'll break this joint, clean it all up, and then re-solder uh, re it 
so that it'll 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 hold and then that'll look good so yeah having looked at this tube it's it's really been it, it's been hacked up and we got to find out exactly where we're supposed to be and get there so the feeding problem i surmise when they modified this gun they flipped the mag tube around end for end and these are the old holes that the um magazine cap retention screw went through but we can see here that this brass that when they brazed this thing it just bounced off the top that's not enough they did rebate this a lot so that when the rounds are coming through backwards the 45 acp has got to be able to hit that and back through it um, with the follower pushing it so this could have been done with a soft solder this did not need to be done with this didn't need to be brazed I don't think. So I'm going to see if I can't get through this here. Ah. You know what we're going to do? We're going to get us a sharp ass drill bit. Stand by. There we go. it to go through so we'll let it go through where it wants to go through there we go all right now we'll take a file and just rough the inside of this tube up we'll take a file and rough the outside of this up and set them down to that height and go ahead and solder it in and if i need to tweak the length of this a little bit i can tweak it uh, in a little while
So I've soldered that in and gone over on a wire wheel and cleaned it up and we can see now that it's fairly straight. And there was a significant camphor in there. So what we really need to know is whether or not a round will climb up that camphor. And we'll do this a couple of times. Here's the follower. We'll stick the spring up in the end of this thing and we will just, this is the worst case scenario laying down like this and we'll just shove, we'll shove this through and that should just pop right out. And it comes right out, you see. Now we'll roll it, we'll roll it 90 and do it one more time. And that's gonna be the worst two possible cases here. And it just pops right out. So now we know that that failure, and you can even see the silver right up inside this line right here. That solder penetrated all the way to the back end. So now we know we've got a good cir circumferential wipe. This is what the plumbers would call a wipe joint. And now I got good contact and this is probably gonna be better than what we had. Um, yeah. So I've reassembled the magazine tube, which we've now we've soldered and you can see that the, that's the end of the mag tube there. And then I cleaned up the front of the mag tube so that it's flush with the inside of the face of the receiver. These two notches are for the ejector. Um, this is the one loading gate here, and that is spring loaded with the goofy little spring. So we have the two gates, we have the lifter here. So watch this, you can see there's the lifter and that'll lift the shell up and drop one in. Now, the important thing here to note is with, with lever guns, you can actually have the hammer and the mainspring and the entire rear end out of this gun. So when you're doing this, you don't have to worry about any unscheduled consequences. Snap caps don't weigh nearly as much as live ammo. And while snap caps are really great for letting hammers down, they don't do function checks for the hood. So if you have the pot, the capacity to take the um, mainspring hammer and all of that mess out of it, so we're going to stick a couple of rounds in here. In the last round, you got to go all the way up inside. So now, when we pop this open, we wind up with a round right there. And then up in the thing it goes. And we didn't get an ejection sequence. And that seems to be one of the weaknesses of this, is that this is designed for a lot longer round. A 44-40, or in this case, a 32-20, is a lot longer round. So you can hold this tension on it a lot longer until you flip it up in the air. I don't know if this is gonna be an issue, but it appears to be one. Let's see here what we can come up with. We'll flick this out. Yeah, see, we are out of sequence because the front of this, that round there is supposed to be held in by the bottom of the loading gate. Okay, so we're running into the same problems here we ran into with the Kennedy where Yeah, so I got a little bit more tweaking to do on this bad boy, but what we have eliminated from this equation is dirt, gak, mung, whichever. And now we're at the point where we're fighting the basic engineering of the gun. So the gun had some engineering issues that we've sort of been able to work through a couple of them. It's important to note that this thing might not have worked in the first place. We don't know that. We don't know whether or not uh, the engineering was right. This gun's been bounced from place to place where they only really wanted it to work for one shot. I don't know. I would say, though, that the ability to just take your 1911 mag, chuck a couple of rounds out of it, and top back off again with the 45 ACP that your army already has kind of makes sense. I mean, we don't know what they were doing, where it was. The gun, the serial number on the gun dates from 1919. So, I don't know. You could say that the concept of it was pretty good. Let's go back inside. So part of the issue we were having here was that the extractor was barely getting into this rim because the entire front end of that bolt head 
is set up for a cartridge that's physically larger. This is, this is larger in diameter, and I'm trying to show the diameter difference between the two rounds here. This is smaller, so what was going on was the cartridge was up further, and the firing pin was whacking this primer down here. It was going off, but it was hitting it down below center. So, as I'm going to show you here in a second, we let the extractor down a little bit to push the uh, cartridge on center line, and then we filled in all the missing material between the size of this round and the 45 ACP. So once we did that, then we started running right. But you can physically see that this cartridge is a lot longer and its center of mass is a lot different. So we're trying to make a gun that was set up for this run a gun that was set up for this. The other thing that was happening was because of all of this extra reveal, these cartridges were not supported by the magazine tube and they would just spew out the top. So I made another magazine tube extension out of a piece of Vetterly barrel and used that and um, made all the cuts in it. And you'll, well, I'll show you that here in just a second. So what that looks like is several things. The modification right here to the nose, we filled that in with some metal there and we made the diameter different. There is a timing surface underneath this extractor that allowed me to cut away material and allow the extractor to sit below flush right here. So when you put a cartridge up underneath the rim, or you put the rim up underneath the extractor here, the, the uh, firing pin hole lines up exactly, and then we shim the bottom in here and it lines up exactly. All right, here you can see the extension that I put on the magazine tube. That's actually sticking in far enough that we had to cut th um, this notch for the uh, shell lifter. And then we had to cut another notch because when you stick a cartridge in here, it tries to run into this wall. And where it runs into the wall here, it was getting stuck. See how the wall of the receiver bends in right here? The nose of this cartridge was going up and getting stuck right there. So I made this cut to allow the nose of this cartridge to hit the wall at a receiver like it would do on a 4440, ride up into the tube and go straight up in, so it works. For me, I don't shoot very often, so the range is a special case for me. I don't typically get out here. You about there? Not close on <laughs> Okay, well shove it open. Just, just, just what I'm saying. Okay, you can do that. Here you go. Now you've got the hammer yep. back on a live round, yep. yeah. so we just have to not yeah, you got to get it up in there. Okay. Maybe it's not liking that. Oh, it's already got another round in there. It's already got another round. So you're 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 there for I'll right that now. Much. We'll do that. We'll, we'll do that for right now. Okay. So I'm going to fade back off camera here, and Bruno is going to run his Argentine modified 45 Ray Formando. Note that while he's shooting it, there's a distinct forward and back. I think we're there. Yeah. Was ejection was ejection was stout. That was much better than the last time. Yeah, no, right? Much better than the last time. Yeah, so we've got this now. During all the bluing and everything, a very sharp edge got yeah. right there, and you got to be kind of careful yeah, stick about sticking your yeah. finger in there, or you'll flay the end of it, like I did here, <laughs> here, here, and there. Outstanding. Now we can go do the sonorous exit music. You know, I've always pondered the similarities between a Pez dispenser and a 1911 mag. You got to wonder what John Browning had going through his head. This Winchester Model 92 in 45 ACP. This is an interesting idea um, because, you know, a regular 92 is about that big, runs fewer rounds and throws less weight. Inside of about 50 yards, I think this thing would be a great idea if you had to tow a gun for a long time, need a lot of firepower. Um, I'll sort through the engineering issues. I was talking before about the fact that I think there's a slightly worn feed mechanism in there because it must have worked because this thing has got some run hours on it um, as always guys it's been a very very distinct pleasure and just remember that if you're gonna be dumb you gotta be tough and do it on your own time
So we're going to hand it to Eric now and prove that even former football stars can get this done right. Eric's one of those guys that when he walks into the room, the air pressure changes. Yeah, not bad, huh? Yeah, outstanding. This is the answer to a lot of questions. Absolutely, it yeah, is. it is. Okay, I think that was a pretty good outside part, don't you? Yeah.